वेलकम फ्रेंड्स अवर नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इज बेसबैंड ट्रांसमिशन ऑफ डिजिटल सिग्नल्स और बेसबैंड पल्स ट्रांसमिशन इन दिस मेथड द डिजिटल डेटा इज ट्रांसमिटेड डायरेक्टली ओवर द चैनल विदाउट एनी मॉड्यूलेशन और वी कैन से दैट द डिजिटल डेटा इज ट्रांसमिटेड विदाउट यूजिंग अ कैरियर सिग्नल हेंस कॉल्ड बेसबैंड चैनल दिस बेसबैंड चैनल इज अ लो पास चैनल एंड इट हैज डिस्पर्सिव इन नेचर बिकॉज द फ्रीक्वेंसी रिस्पॉन्स ऑफ दिस बेसबैंड चैनल डेविएट फ्रॉम द आइडियल लो पास फिल्टर हेंस कॉल्ड डिस्पर्सिव इन नेचर बट देर इज अ मेजर प्रॉब्लम इन बेसबैंड ट्रांसमिशन एंड दिस प्रॉब्लम इज कॉल्ड इंटर सिंबल इंटरफ्रेंस और आई एस आई दिस इंटर सिंबल इंटरफ्रेंस अकर वेन ईच रिसीव पर्ल्स इज इफेक्टेड बाई इट्स एडजस्टेंट पर्ल्स एंड गिव राइज टू द इंटरफ्रेंस दैट इज कॉल्ड आई एस आई और इंटर सिंबल इंटरफ्रेंस सो इन बेसमेंट ट्रांसमिशन ऑफ डिजिटल सिग्नल्स आई एस आई इज अ मेजर सोर्स ऑफ बिट एरर्स in the recovered data stream at the receiver output so here the baseband signal that is also called modulating signal or message signal are in the form of data stream or in the form of pulses and these baseband signals is directly transmitted via baseband channel and this is a low pass channel after this it is received by a receiver but at the receiver side the recovered data stream has a major source of bit error that is due to inter symbol interference and the receiver noise or channel noise and in order to get optimum detection the receiver must be lti filter and here in baseband transmission we call it matched filter because here the impulse response of lti filter is matched to the incoming pulse signal so for optimum detection in baseband transmission we use a matched filter at the receiver side this matched filter is an ideal filter that minimizes the effect of noise in the received signal as well as it maximizes the signal to noise ratio of the filtered signal so the purpose of the match filter at the receiver side is to maximizes the signal to noise ratio and minimizes the effect of noise next we discuss the matched filter match filter is a type of lti filter hence called linear filter the block diagram of match filter is shown in figure match filter is a type of lti filter having impulse response ht the input of the match filter is the combination of incoming pulse signal denoted by gt and additive white noise denoted by wt here wt is also called front end receiver noise having zero mean and power spectral density equals to n0 by 2 here n not is called average noise power per unit bandwidth so the input of the match filter is xt that is equals to gt plus wt now the output of this lti filter is denoted by yt that is sampled at t equals to capital t and we get y function of capital t so the first equation for match filter is the input of the lti filter denoted by xt and it is equals to gt plus wt here wt is called a additive white gaussian noise gt is a pulse signal so the input of the lti filter is noisy pulse signal that is limited between 0 to capital t now after linear filtering we get yt that is equals to g not t plus nt here 
G0 T is the linear output corresponding to the pulse signal GT and NT is the filtered noise. And the purpose of the match filter is to maximize the output signal to noise ratio. So, we next discuss maximization of output signal to noise ratio. For this, we again consider a block diagram of match filter having input signal XT and output signal YT that is sampled at T equals to capital T. Here output YT is equals to G naught T plus NT. Here NT is a filtered noise and G naught T is the linear output corresponding to the incoming pulse signal GT. Here the match filter is a type of linear filter having a impulse response HT in time domain and in frequency domain the impulse response is denoted by capital H function of F. And here our requirement is to maximize the signal to noise ratio. So the signal G naught T is far greater than filtered noise NT. And to make this requirement the instantaneous power of signal G naught T at sampling T equals to capital T is far greater than the average power of the filtered noise. And this is equivalent to the maximizing peak pulse signal to noise ratio. And it is denoted by eta and it is equals to G naught T mod square upon expectation of n square T. Here, G naught T mod square is the instantaneous power in output signal and capital E is called the statistical expectation operator that is used to determine the average output noise power denoted by E n square T. So, in order to get maximizing signal to noise ratio, we solve eta that is G naught T mod square upon E n square T. So, first we derive numerator that is mod G naught T square. For this we consider the incoming signal G T. Now, after filtering using LTI filter, we get G naught T. The transfer function that is the impulse response of LTI filter is H T in time domain. And we know that the output of the LTI system G naught T is equals to the convolution of incoming pulse G T and impulse response H T. So, the output G naught T is equals to G T convolution H T in time domain. And here we use a property of Fourier transform that is the Fourier transform of convolution of two signal in time domain is equals to the multiplication of their Fourier transform. So, in frequency domain G naught F is equals to simply multiplication of capital G function of F into capital H function of F that is the Fourier transform of G T and H T respectively. Now, using equation G naught F equals to G F into H F that is the frequency domain representation of G naught T and in order to get its time domain version we take inverse Fourier transform so that G naught F get converted into G naught T and it is equals to integration of G F H F e to power J 2 pi F T into D F taking limits from f equals to minus infinity to infinity. This is a formula for determination of inverse Fourier transform. After converting into time domain, it gets sampled at t equals to capital T. After sampling, we get mod of g naught t square. In place of small t, we put capital T. And we get numerator term that is mod of G naught T square and it is called instantaneous power in output signal. Next, we find denominator that is E n square T. For this, we consider the noise signal. Input of the LTI filter that is match filter is WT. WT is the white noise. It has a power spectral density of N naught by 2. 
Here N0 is called average noise power per unit bandwidth. After filtering, WT get converted into NT that is called filtered noise. And the power spectral density of filtered noise is denoted by S suffix N function of F. The power spectral density of filtered noise is simply equal to the power spectral density of input noise WT times the square of the magnitude of transfer function HF. So, power spectral density S and F is equal to N0 by 2 mod of HF square. Now, with the help of power spectral density of filtered noise, we can determine the average power of output noise, that is NT. For this, we use expectation operator. Expectation operator N square T is equal to integration S and F into DF. Taking limit f equals to minus infinity to infinity. In place of S and F that is called power spectral density of filtered noise, we can write N0 by 2 mod of HF square. So, the average power of filtered noise is equals to E N square T that is N0 upon 2 integration mod of HF square into DF. Now, after determining mod of g naught t square and e n square t, we can find the pulse signal to noise ratio that is denoted by eta and it is the ratio of mod of g naught t square upon e n square t. So, we simply put the values and we get peak pulse signal to noise ratio that is denoted by eta. And in order to get maximized signal to noise ratio, we have to find the solution. Here, the numerator terms can be solved using screw verge inequality. According to this, phi 1x and phi 2x are the two complex functions in real variable x. And these complex functions must satisfy the following conditions that is, integration of mod phi 1x square dx less than infinity. Also, integration mod of phi 2x square dx less than infinity means the two complex functions should have a finite value. So, in Scrooge inequality, phi 1x and phi 2x are the two complex functions and must satisfy the conditions. Then, we can write mod of integration phi 1x phi 2x dx square less than or equals to integration phi 1x square dx, integration phi 2x square into dx, taking limit x equals to minus infinity to infinity. And this can be written if and only if phi 1x equals to k times of phi 2x star. Here phi 2x star is called complex conjugate of phi 2x. So, in order to solve Maximum signal to noise ratio, we use Kruger's inequality at the numerator side. For this, we assume that phi 1 x equals to hf and phi 2 x equals to gf e to power j 2 pi ft. So, the numerator that is integration gf hf e to power j 2 pi ft df mod square is less than or equals to integration gf square df into integration hf square into df. Because we know that mod of gf e to power j 2 pi ft is simply mod of gf. Here mod of e to power 2 pi ft is equals to 1. So, after using Scrooge inequality at the numerator, we get eta less than or equals to Integration gf square df, integration hf square df upon n square upon 2 integration hf square into df. Here, hf term is cancelled and we get eta less than or equals to integration gf square df upon n naught by 2. And after rearrange, we get eta less than or equals to 2 upon n naught integration gf square into df taking limit f equals to minus infinity to infinity. And this is a relation 
from which we can determine the maximum signal to noise ratio in order to get optimum detection using mesh filter. And from this relation, we see that eta does not depend upon HF that is called the transfer function of the filter and depend only on the signal energy denoted by integration gf square into df and noise power spectral density that is n0 by 2. And from here we can find the maximum peak pulse signal to noise ratio. Here eta is less than or equals to 2 upon n0 integration gf square into df and its maximum value is equal to that is eta max equals to 2 upon n0 integration gf square into df. And this is written if and only if hf is equals to k times of gf star e to power minus j 2 pi ft. That is according to phi 1 x equals to k times of phi 2 x star. Here phi 2 x star is the complex conjugate of phi 2 x. And here phi 2 x equals to gf e to power j 2 pi ft and its complex conjugate is gf star e to power minus j 2 pi ft. Now, this is in frequency domain. So, our next step is to determine inverse Fourier transform of HF in order to get impulse response HT that is called optimum impulse response of match filter. Now, the inverse Fourier transform of HF is given by integration HF e to power j 2 pi ft into df. In place of HF, we can write K GF star e to power minus J 2 pi F capital T. Now we combine two exponent terms and we get e to power minus J 2 pi F within bracket capital T minus small t. Also, as the Fourier transform GF is a complex real function and its complex conjugate that is GF star is equals to G function of minus F. And we get optimum impulse response that is equals to k integration g function of minus f e to power minus j 2 pi f capital T minus t into df. And the inverse Fourier transform of right hand side is k into g function of capital T minus t that is called the optimum impulse response of matched filter in time domain. So, we can see that to get optimum detection using matched filter, the signal to noise ratio should be maximum and for this the impulse response HT is exactly a reversed and time delay copy of the transmitted signal GT.